Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Assessor Reform Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Wednesday morning devotion. And as we come together for Wednesday morning, we are continuing to look at Charles Spurgeon's morning and evening. And today we are going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5. So as we prepare to come and hear these words from our brother, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for you and your mighty grace have given unto us another day to serve you. You have given us this day that we might rejoice in your mercy to sinners, that your God, you through your great and glorious hand has awakened our hearts to see our need and that our need can only be met in Jesus Christ. And so to God, as we come together this morning to spend this few, these few moments together, God, we ask that your Holy Spirit will use this time to strengthen our bond with our Savior and that we might look more and more unto him for all of our needs. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning we turn uh, to 2 Corinthians 1.5. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. There is a perfect balance in this. God, in his providence, operates the scales. On one side, he puts his people's trials. And on the other, he puts their consolations. When the scale of trial is nearly empty, you will always find the scale of consolation in nearly the same condition. And when the scale of trials is full, you will find the scale of consolation just as heavy. When the dark clouds gather, the light is more brightly revealed to us. When the night falls and the storm is brewing, the heavenly captain is always closest to his crew. It is a blessed thing that when we are most downcast, then we are most lifted up by the consolations of the Spirit. One reason is trials make room for consolation. Great hearts can only be made by great troubles. The spade of trouble digs the reservoir of comfort deeper and makes more room for consolation. God comes into our heart. He finds it full. He begins to break our comforts and to make it empty. Then, there is more room for grace. The humbler a man is, the more comfort he will have here. Because he will be more fitted to receive it. Another reason why we are often happiest in our troubles is this. Then we have the closest dealings with God. When the barn is full, man can live without God. When the purse is bursting with gold, we try to do so much without prayer. But when our shelter is removed, then we want our God. When the house is purged of idols, then we are compelled to follow the Lord, for He alone is remaining with us. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, the psalmist cries in Psalm 130. There is no cry so good as that which comes from the depths of the soul. Through deep trials and afflictions, they bring us to God. And we are happier. For your nearness to God is happiness. Come, troubled believer, do not fret over your heavy troubles, for they are the heralds of weighty mercies. You know, this has been somewhat of a theme recently, not only uh, in the section of Spurgeon's uh, gleanings that we are in, but of course in our time in the book of Ecclesiastes, we have seen over and over this plea from Solomon, the man who was the richest the Bible ever knew. The man who had all the luxuries available to a king of his day. And yet, what is his cry? 
All is vanity. And why is it vanity? Because it profits nothing. It may profit for a season. It may profit for a time. It may help you in the moment. But what worth are these things that are passing away, that are merely temporary? What made you happy last week is not going to make you happy next week. What gets you excited is is going to lose its luster. And you'll have to double up whatever it is you are doing. It's like the most evil of drugs. For instead of destroying the body, it destroys the soul as well. This is the warning that comes with a blessing. You see, the Lord our God never condemns without offering mercy. For the sinner, he cries out and shows us his very son, Jesus Christ, who is more than just sufficient for our needs. He is the answer to our needs, him in himself. For we're reminded that we do not seek Christ out of what we can gain from Christ. But rather we seek Christ for his own sake. Because he is altogether lovely. Because he is wonderful. He is the Prince of Peace. The glorious Son of the living God. And the knowledge of these things is more than enough to bring us through the temptations of this life. And so we Seek to be encouraged by these good things. For God is our God. And we are his people. And ultimately that is our daily plea of love. So may the Lord watch over you today. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Take care. And God bless.